into the Oval Office yesterday to argue that he was not wrong about Alabama. According to Jake Tapper, Fox News senior White House correspondent John Roberts was beckoned to the Oval Office yesterday afternoon. In an internal Fox News email obtained by CNN, Roberts wrote that Trump, quote, stressed to me that forecast for Dorian last week had Alabama in the warning cone. He insisted that it is unfair to say Alabama was never threatened by the storm. According to Tapper, Robert's analysis of the meeting was that the president was just looking for acknowledgement that he was not wrong for saying that at some point Alabama was at risk, even if the situation had changed by the time he issued the tweet. Sunday morning, that was. Roberts did not immediately respond to CNN's request for a comment. Joe, I have to say I've been away for a little bit on vacation, blissfully unplugged, and to come back yesterday and to see that the <laughs> President of the United States is still talking about a map and a doodle he drew uh, about a hurricane that was coming, not to Alabama, that the forecast was changed, that he's still insisting upon being right about something he was so clearly wrong about is stunning and a little bit baffling. Well, it is. It's also, of course, disturbing. There's so many things that happen, and I think a lot of us, I really think you and I have gotten to the point where we roll our eyes on most of these tweets. Yeah. Uh, but here, you're actually talking about a hurricane. The president tweeted out that residents of Alabama needed to be worried at a point when they didn't. So, yeah. of course, that causes a lot of concern, so much so that the government has to set out a clarifying statement. I thought more disturbing was that last night was a night when people in South Carolina and North Carolina and now Virginia were either getting hit by the hurricane or having to prepare for the hurricane. Those states, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia and I've I have been inside my house with the windows uh, and, and doors boarded up and hunkering down and it, it's really frightening you don't know what tornadoes are gonna spin off you don't know where they're gonna go you don't know how your community is going to be ripped apart and while that at that precise moment the president of the United States wasn't talking about South Carolina or North Carolina or Virginia. It's incredible. He was talking about Alabama, a state that was never in any danger and certainly was at least, as Shep Smith and Fox News said, four days removed from any danger by the time he tweeted his tweet. And, you know, David Ignatius, uh, again, so much of this I, I, is just farce. And I've got to the point, I just I don't pull my hair out at the ignorance and the nonsense but in a case like this he panicked people in Alabama now he's lying about it and he's doing that instead of doing what every president that I ever dealt with during these storms whether it was Bill Clinton or George W Bush or governors like Lawton Childs or Jeb Bush I mean when those storms are about to hit shore all of their attention and focus was on protecting the people that were in the path of the storm. Donald Trump, bizarrely enough, was focused on a Sharpie doodle that he had done <laughs> several days before. Uh, and there are, of course, the whole world is watching. There are consequences in Russia and China and Saudi Arabia and across the world that our leader seems this detached and this unstable emotionally. You know, Joe, the thing about the Sharpie Gate, as we've been calling it, is that it offers a remarkable psychological uh, insight in, into the president and what makes him tick. Anybody makes a mistake. Uh, he got it wrong the first time around about Alabama. It's understandable, apparently, in that he'd seen some earlier reporting and it apparently confused it in, in his mind. That, that happens to people, even presidents. Uh, but then you move on. This obsessive attempt to keep relitigating to the point of summoning a reporter, John Roberts, to the White House to, to, to make his case, uh, uh, taking this and, and, and making it the only story that today we're, we're focusing on, illustrates the self-destructive uh, mm -hmm. way this president operates. It's, it's, it's mystifying to me. This was one where you it, just, you know, you make a mistake, you move on. 
Uh, our colleague John Meacham has made that point in comments he's made over the last 24 hours. Donald Trump is different. He's got to be right about everything. If he feels like he's been you know, humiliated by being caught in a lie, it's the fault of the fake news media, et cetera, et cetera. In this case, you just got to watch it and shake your head. It's incredible. It is self-destructive. You see him, Joe, talking about, um, for example, when you get into his head, you know that he sees the value of even negative coverage of talking about Penn staying at a Trump property, not Doral, bed bugs, but the other one in Ireland. And you know that every time that story is covered, Trump is happy because at least it's press coverage for a brand of his. But with this, you just, I have no idea what his end game could be when he continues to prove that he was completely wrong. Well, it's not, it's not an end game. And Sam Stein, I, I, I've always said that because Donald Trump surprised the mainstream media in 2016 with his unorthodox campaign, his terrible campaign in right. many ways, uh, there's always this assumption that he's got th is this magic, <laughs> this, this voodoo that we just don't understand the strange <laughs> ways of Donald Trump and that he's he is playing three-dimensional chess. No, he's not playing three-dimensional chess. These are the moments that you realize he stares at the board, he picks up a pawn, puts it in his mouth, and starts <laughs> eating it. That's where we are. All of this does not accrue to his benefit. As he digests all of the chess pieces, you realize when it hits his stomach, they it's make bad back news. Out. It's bad news for him. He, he this is this is more bad news for Donald Trump in a terrible summer. I'm, I'm trying to go along with this imagery, but I don't know how to advance it. Uh, but I do agree with you. I was talking with uh, Susan before we um, started the show about whether there was something he was trying to distract from. Uh, maybe it's um, you know transferring money to his border wall from military bases. Uh, something that is more uh, politically problematic. And my position is. If he's trying to distract, if he's trying to deflect, this is the worst job at deflection or distraction you could possibly do because he looks pathological. He looks like someone who, uh, if your uncle were doing this, you would say, oh my God, he has a, a real problem. Uh, nine tweets, yeah. five different maps, an inability to just let something so minor go, uh, and to do so at a time when, one, uh, the hurricane is hitting uh, the U.S. mainland, which is uh, obviously something that a president should be attentive to, but two, and I don't want this to get lost, a generational storm has just completely obliterated and wiped away the Bahamas and caused a mass amount of human suffering, including a death count that's likely to shock us. Uh, for a president to not show a modicum of empathy or attention to that because he's obsessively drawing Sharpies on old maps is a bizarre thing to witness, and it's a bad political development for him, too. So I don't think he's distracting, yeah. because if he was tr trying to distract, he would be doing something else other than this. Joe, I agree with you and Sam. I think there's a tendency these days to overthink what President Trump is doing or saying. He can't mm -hmm. be wrong. We've known this about him for how long? He's embarrassed that he was very wrong. Now he's the President of the United States, so when he is wrong, it has real ramifications. It has impact, as you know, for the people of Alabama who may have thought they were uh, going to be getting a storm their way. The National Weather Service in Birmingham came out 20 minutes after his first tweet on Sunday and said, no, the storm's not coming here. He has to dig in deeper and create this chasm between two sides, those who are with him and those who are against him, even on mm -hmm. a tweet where he was patently and clearly and demonstrably wrong. He has to dig in. He can't be wrong, even though everyone knows he is because it's sitting in plain sight in this case. Yeah, you know, Mika, for in, in most cases, I mean, well, in every case except for Donald Trump, the case of the strange case of Donald J. Trump. Uh, if the National Weather Service comes out 20 minutes later and corrects what you said, yeah. then you don't fight it for another week. You go, oh, you know what? I was looking at old maps and you old maps. Uh, sorry about that. Just can't do it. And it's something that he told us from the very beginning that he just can't.